Good Sunday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of your forecast for tonight, which includes more rainfall and also looking again at a decent up and down week where it comes to temperatures in the area. Not seeing anything in the way of an Arctic blast coming our way. Excuse the camera wobbles. Let me just make certain everybody can see everything here for right now. Going to be seeing again some cooler temperatures at times, but again, nothing huge taking place. We'll talk Talk more about what we will be looking for coming up here in just a little bit. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, that's cool. Take a look at the forecast in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen or go to this website address for more on our 7 to 10 day forecast and we'll keep you updated there as well. Got a ton of stuff to talk about for tonight. Got heavy rain on the way, possible dense fog tomorrow morning. Maybe some severe weather coming our direction, so we got all kinds of things to talk about for tonight. Drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section. Would love to see what the weather's like, no matter where you're checking in from in the Mid-South area. If you're just tuning in for the first time, we cover West Tennessee, North Mississippi, and Eastern Arkansas with Memphis right there in the middle inside Shelby County. But wherever you're watching from tonight, welcome to the program. And again, we'll talk more about what's going on with the forecast coming up here as we go throughout the rest of the evening. Just heading into sunset in Earth orbit, a live view from the International Space Station. Kind of hard to see the Earth down there as the ISS is making its way into Earth's shadow, seeing a sunrise and sunset every 45 minutes or so. But at least we're able to catch a pretty good view of what it looked like out there. If you'd like to see the latest capture from just about a half an hour ago, go to my Facebook page and you can see more about what this looks like and have access to this camera from Ustream from NASA to see what the astronauts are seeing when they look out of their window. So some pretty good opportunities to look out the door there 200 miles up. Temperatures tonight should again be fairly stable. We're looking again at numbers back in the lower to mid 50s. Thanks to southerly winds, temperatures will be again not dropping too much farther from where they are now. It will be cool, but it won't be bone chilling cold like we saw at least a couple of days ago anyway. And for those of you who are counting the days until we get to the next season. Winter ends in 37 days and change. And again, working our way toward what's called the vernal equinox. That's the spring equinox, equal day and nighttime. We're gaining daylight steadily as we head toward the longer days of summer coming up in the next several months. So for those of you who are waiting for the end of winter, heading into springtime, you got about a little bit more than a month ago out there. And temperatures today pretty close to normal. Very chilly yesterday, back in the lower 50s across much of the area for tonight. And again, looking at more chances of rainfall out across much of the area. 48 in Collierville, Ronnie Williams. Thank you very much uh, for that weather report tonight and everybody else checking in from around the area. Seattle snowed in and 32 degrees. Jesse Coleman, hope you stay safe there and get ready for some more snow heading your way. From what I understand, a lot more coming your direction. Camden, Tennessee, pouring down. Cindy Jambard, hope I'm saying that correctly. Thank you very much for that. And Paulette Morrow, 44 degrees and raining in New Bern, Tennessee. Thank you very much uh, for that weather report there. Traffic is going to be getting back to normal in the next few hours, but once again, Park Avenue, it looks like traffic has now resumed over I-240, but I-240 in both directions is still shut down at this time, and hopefully that'll be ending sooner rather than later. If that happens from TDOT, we'll let you know. But in the meantime, still a lot of heavy construction going on into and around the area before they open up the roadways into tomorrow morning. Showers mainly along and north of Interstate 40. We're not getting a lot of activity south of I-40 at this time. A little bit more in the way of just spotty showers down here from the metro down to the south. Most of the rainfall has been up here. And that's a problem because just like cars on a railroad track going over the same place over and over and over again, the effect is called training, just like what we described, the cars repeating the area over and over. So this area picking up a lot more rainfall than down here. This is where we're likely to see more flooding in the next couple of days. And the National Weather Service has issued a flood advisory for that area, flood watch for the northern third of the News Channel 3 viewing area. So if you live north of Memphis, northeast Arkansas, northwest Tennessee, Boot Hill, southeast Missouri, you could pick up a whole bunch more rainfall in about the next 48 hours. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit, how much we're actually expecting. Running the numbers again through the evening, temperatures are going to be way above freezing. Those southerly winds helping to keep the temperatures up 
and we're not seeing anything out there in the way of problems with snowfall out across the Mid-South. Jamie Cox, glad you appreciated the uh, Audubon post on birds on my Facebook page. Check out more information at facebook.com slash austinoniwreg. Grady Bennett, cloudy, 46.4 degrees, calm winds in Berclair. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, Stephanie DeHart, how much rain for Tipton County? We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. And everybody else checking in across the Mid-South, thanks for dropping by for our live netcast for tonight. Scott Jarvis, Banner, Mississippi, probably not a good sunset view tonight out there, but thank you for those pictures down there. 58 degrees and light winds in Banner. Thank you very much there. Tomorrow morning, rain chances begin to spread south of I-40 and the metro area. So as you get the kids ready for school tonight, get some rain protection ready to go. You will need it at some point in time tomorrow because into tomorrow afternoon, we will see more chances of rain overspreading the Mid-South. And unfortunately, that could also mean the potential for maybe some severe weather out there. Not great chances, but again, still possible and the chances of rain will be sticking around right through dismissal time. And as the kids make their way on home, after-school activities are going to be best indoors rather than outdoors because of all this rain sticking around. Now, again, the chances of anything involving severe weather are not great. We're not seeing anything in the way of severe weather for tonight. But as we get into tomorrow, that's where the Storm Prediction Center is placing the Mid-South area into and around a marginal risk of severe weather. It's, again, not a great chance, but it is still a chance. Main threat to be large hail and damaging winds. That's going to be the main threat. This time of the year, we cannot rule out the possibility of isolated tornadoes, but once again, this is going to be important for tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon and evening. That's where we'll see the best chance of severe weather. Now, again, notice the scale here. This is not a huge severe weather outbreak, but it is again, still possible. What you're seeing up here in the lighter green area, that's just the possibility of generic thunderstorms. The severe weather threat, such as it is, is going to be, again, across much of the Mid-South from, say, Covington, Dyersburg, into and around areas close to and south of Jonesboro. Now, if you live in these areas, I would be watching for the potential of stronger weather just in case. If anything happens, we'll keep you updated on this, so keep it tuned again to the weather experts for more. And again, that is what we're going to be seeing for tomorrow afternoon and evening. Not tonight, not tomorrow morning, but mainly Monday afternoon and evening into and around dinner time. That'll be the best possibility again for anything out there for right now. Brownfield, Mississippi, 50 degrees and cloudy. Lisa Boyd Wilbanks. Uh, thank you very much for that report uh, coming in from the area here. Raining in Jackson, Tennessee. Clyde George, thank you very much for that weather report. And everybody else checking in uh, into and around the area. Lachea has no time to play Walker. Cold in, I'm assuming that's New York. If that's anywhere close to the Bronx, say hello to my cousin Alex back that direction. Heading into the next couple of days, ending about early Tuesday afternoon or so, that's where we see the chances of rain coming to an end, but stacking up pretty heavily as, again, those rain showers go over the same area again and again and again. So northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, northwest Tennessee, into and around that area, that'll be the heaviest amount of precipitation. Now, you're saying, okay, so what's the big deal? It's going to rain. The trouble is when you get this much falling on ground that's already saturated, that rain runs off very quickly instead of getting absorbed by the soil. That means the creeks and ditches and rivers and streams are going to fill up very quickly as all that runoff heads into the area. So low-lying roads close to streams, creeks, rivers, things like that could be seeing some backups in the next several days, and that could mean danger on the roadways. Remember, never drive across water-covered roadways. Turn around don't drown. Find another way to get to where you're going. Your life could depend on it. It only takes about six inches to a foot of rushing water to shove a car off the roadway. Yes, that includes SUVs. So again, all this rainfall coming down up here, it's got to go someplace. And again, the ground can't hold any more of it because it's already saturated. The soil molecules already holding in a lot of that water. So all of this has got to drain into the Mississippi River. And that's a lot of rainfall to consider over a very large area. So some very heavy rainfall, northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, northwest Tennessee, 
not as much across the southern areas south of I-40, but again, it's still going to be soaked out there throughout Monday and into early Tuesday. So please keep that in mind in your travel plans as we go throughout the rest of the area. Logan Ward just wants to ride his mountain bike on the trails. Well, you should be able to wait a couple of days for that one at this point in time. So again, uh, should be able to see uh, the possibility of some drier weather out there. We'll take a look at that in the seven-day forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Rich L, E-H-L, hope I'm saying that right. Thank you very much for your kind comments there. Jeffrey Henson, Lauderdale County still raining and could be some flooding up there as well. And Lila Pardue, 52.3. Thank you very much in Corinth, Mississippi, for that report there. Do appreciate all the weather reports everybody's sending in. Tomorrow morning could be some fog out across the Mid-South. Visibilities at or very close to zero, less than a mile in number, numerous locations. And the numbers out there below half mile, it's going to be very difficult to see anything out there. So please keep that in mind, again, for your commute tomorrow. Don't forget about Corey Ventura's traffic information bright and early on daybreak, starting off with more details on that at about 5.30 tomorrow morning. Very mild tomorrow, temperatures back in the mid-60s, better chances of thunderstorms again afternoon and evening, and then maybe a few showers sticking around throughout the late morning hours, but really that should do it for the rainfall out there. So again, if you want to get out and shake off some of that cabin fever, you may get a chance to do so by Tuesday evening. Now again, cooling off a little bit, not an Arctic blast, but cooler a brief bit before our next storm system rolls in. So by Wednesday, we get some nice sunshine out here and we're going to dry out a bit before the next storm system comes on through. This one around Valentine's Day is going to be the one that is moving through the Pacific Northwest right now, the one that's giving them even more snow out that direction. That one, as it makes its way through the midsection of the country, will give us more chances of showers and thunderstorms from Valentine's Day in the afternoon and evening, right on in through about early on Friday. Drying out again, but cooler as we head into this next weekend. And then as we go toward the later portions of February, some showers, not great chances, but possible, and numbers very close to normal at this time frame. Out again into the lower 50s for highs and back into the upper 30s to lower 40s for low temperatures. All these numbers will change in the next several days, so please keep attuned to the weather experts, and we'll keep you updated on what's going on. Now, as a science communicator, as a meteorologist and atmospheric scientist, I like to be able to, again, bring information to people and look at different ways, look at, find different ways of looking at things and making certain you, the viewing public, know about stuff. That's why I cram my social media pages full of all kinds of great things like science and technology and things like that. So just asking a question for one, count them, one weathercast, and again, that's going to be it if you approve about this. Should we do a weather forecast in metrics next weekend. And again, we've had some very vocal uh, one direction or the other on this. Now again, I want to make this exceptionally, perfectly crystal clear on this. We are not changing over to a metric forecast system. That's not happening at this time. But just to be able to say, let's take a look at it for just taking a look at it to see just how easy the metric system is. And most importantly, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's a system that is used by 99% of all the other countries in the world. You use some of that already in the form of liters. You pick up a two liter bottle of soda at the store. You don't measure that in gallons and it's a very simple system in its own way. So if we were to just to do it for one weather cast, would you approve, would you disapprove, or do you care one way or the other? And again, because this has been misinterpreted 16 different ways from Sunday and back again, we are not, N-O-T, not switching over to total metrics. There, I said it, I feel better now. So if you want to go to my Twitter page and vote on this, you have the opportunity to give your say-so on this. So far this weekend, little less than half of you are saying, sure, this sounds like a great idea, let's give it a shot. About two out of five are saying at this point in time, no, don't want to do this. The system is good, let's stay with English, let's not worry about it whatsoever. And about 16% of you are like, eh, don't care one way or the other. So if you'd like to vote on this, we'd love to have your opinion on this. Please go to my Twitter page at twitter.com slash underscore WREG3. 
It's just one more way of looking at number systems, and it's a more accurate and easier way of doing things. Very neat to take a look at, and also to examine why we, as Americans, kind of find this system to be reprehensible to some of us, and even the mere mention of it brings out some very jaded opinions one direction or the other. So if you'd like to know more about this, again, please vote and find out more. We'll update this throughout the rest of the week and let you know what's going on. And tune in next week, Daybreak Saturday, to see what the official announcement is. So we'll have more on that coming up later. Join Skywarn if you want to know more about how to volunteer for Skywarn duty in the Mid-South area by becoming a spotter. Not a chaser, but a spotter. This is your opportunity to learn more from the National Weather Service. Go to weather.gov slash MEG or just go to weather.gov, click on the map for the Mid-South area, and then follow the links for information about the first four meetings. There's about a baker's dozen of these across the area. Your opportunity to learn a lot more about what goes on out there for right now. Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. Check in with my forecast there. Also, at their brand new time, Bob and Josh are on with Talkback Live, sports chat extraordinaire, Monday through Thursday, starting at 6 a.m. on AM 730 and AM 1600, and soon coming to the FM dial. We'll let you know when that happens, but my News Channel 3 forecast available four days a week from 6 to 8 a.m. Good opportunity to tune in and find out more there. Also, tune in for more on my Your Environment blog. It's available at our website. You can go to Weather page and click on Your Environment or go to wreg.com slash weather slash environment. We just posted it about what you can do to help the environment. More importantly, what is the Green New Deal that is being suggested by members of Congress? Have you even read it before you formed an opinion about it? Have you seen the House resolution? If you haven't, go to our Your Environment page and the information about what it is and more importantly, what it is not, that's a good opportunity for you to learn more about both environmental efforts and what you can do to keep up to date with what's happening in the legislative process. As a citizen and a taxpayer, it's a very good idea to keep informed, and we help you do that. Again, go to my Your Environment blog for this week. It's just posted about an hour ago, and you can find out more at wreg.com slash weather. I'll have updates on weather where the troops are coming up at about 10 minutes until 9 o'clock tonight. It's in just about a half an hour or so, so stay tuned for more on that. One more peek at the forecast for the school kids tomorrow morning. Fairly mild in the morning, but breezy, and also seeing some mild temperatures tomorrow, but increasing chances of showers and thunderstorms throughout the day. And that, again, could lead to some severe weather later on tomorrow afternoon and evening. So something to take a look at there. So, again, if you'd like to know more about that forecast, we'll have updates coming up tonight on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. The Grammys are on right now. You can probably hear that uh, on the speakers in the background here in the studio. When the Grammys wrap up, we'll have the information for you coming up tonight at 10. And again, Todd Demers with his weather and Corey Ventura with traffic on daybreak. That'll be starting tomorrow morning at 4.30 a.m. Questions, concerns, ideas, anything you want to suggest, new graphics, new things you want to take a look at, more satellite, more climate data, anything like that, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'd love to know what you think. Complaints, if you absolutely must, but again, we'll take everything that we can get from you on this. And again, in the red bar at the bottom of the screen and on all these locations, you can find out more about my various social media pages as well. Again, tonight at 10 and Todd on Daybreak tomorrow. Tim and Jim have more throughout the rest of the day. So if there is severe weather, keep it tuned to the weather experts and we'll keep you advised on everything going on in the Mid-South. Thank you for dropping in tonight. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for updates on your forecast throughout the rest of the upcoming week. And, of course, I'll have more tonight on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you for joining us tonight, and stick around for a lot more from News Channel 3 on air and online.